A huge thing that has been on my mind recently is a question I keep asking myself, and that is, are we as the PvP community being too hard on Bungie? Not many people know exactly all the work and complexities of balancing such a massive online project. But I am forced to say that I still feel that following community suggestions, at least somewhat, is Bungie's best option in terms of making Destiny's PvP fun and balanced. However, the truth is we don't know that for certain either, exactly what is possible for them to change, or even their overall vision for the game. I mean, look at look at the look at the PvP now. I mean, they've tried to follow our suggestions as much as possible. Uh, granted, we believe that they've over nerfed some things. For example, Thorn, absolutely the most hated and and most overpowered weapon in Destiny history. But they just killed it way too much, and it was just really not needed. So today, I have decided to tackle the precise and ultimately hypothetical question: What exact changes? would you make to balance Destiny PvP? It is worth noting that this may become a two or maybe even three part video depending on how much I want to spur this out because the first thing I will be talking about is subclass or ability balance which has far less numbers than the weapons portion which will and will undoubtedly take less time. Two major nodes on subclasses have made themselves painfully common in Crucible since the last major update, those being Amplitude and Juggernaut. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that there is little to no solid argument for either of these things being balanced in their current state. They both provide easy substitutes for gun skill by increasing your chance of winning a close quarters combat fight. I will also go out on another limb and say that in my opinion Destiny PvP would be better off if both Juggernaut, which I am not certain can ever be balanced to a middling power point, as well as Shoulder Charge, which has never truly been overpowered by definition, but simply the principle of, a, of one subclass having access to a one-hit kill melee bothers me, if they were completely removed in favor of other bonuses. For instance, a reduced flinch bonus or a, reduced melee, uh, or a melee speed bonus akin to those on weapons and armor currently in the game. These don't have to be the exact bonuses, but it should be something keeping with the Titan's tank soldier theme. However, I recognize that this is this has virtually no chance of happening, and I think that for Juggernaut to be balanced currently, any type of jump ability movement should either weaken or entirely cancel the Juggernaut shield. This would compromise the utility of closing the gap so quickly via the Titan skating technique, protected by a frontal shield that can tank things including but not limited to a high impact snipe, a shot from sleeper simulant, and a golden gun shot all to get a relatively easy one-hit kill with a shotgun. For Amplitude, I think that Stormcaller and specifically Thunderstrike, the Stormcaller's melee kit, should be entirely retooled. For instance, the chain effect granted by the Chain Lightning perk should be inherent on the melee. That would be pretty cool. The added range that is already gained by having basic Thunderstrike is plenty to increase melee consistency and is still as good or better than Blink Strike range on Blade Dancers. So that should be what Amplitude does, not further increase the range of a melee that already guarantees better range. This should make Amplitude the hands down decision over Rising Storm, which is hits with uh, Thunderstrike's Charger Super Grenade and Melee. But if another perk is added to replace Chain Lightning, that could mix it up a bit. It could even be akin to feedback, or close and or personal, where doing previous damage to a target increases the damage of your melee. Which you might think would be crazy until you remember that all the range from the melee would be gone, leaving you with a still powerful but much less frustrating normal Warlock melee, and Striker Titans already have an extra damage melee for free, so that perk isn't completely crazy or even necessarily game-breaking, although many people have called for the nerf of the Striker Titan charge melee as well. The next issue I want addressed is Mine Grenades. These include Lightning, Trip Mine, and Spike Grenades, and while some, like Trip Mine and Lightning, have always been incredibly strong options, Spike Grenades have also come out of the woodwork in terms of objective kill potential and damage output. Do I think these grenades need to be nerfed? Not necessarily. All I want for now is the animations of the grenades to better match the area that they can do damage in. We've all been in the situation where we feel like we've ran 10 feet horizontally past a lightning or trip mine grenade only to have it somehow still kill you. Could a reduction to the cone area of all these nades be warranted? Yes, possibly, but I would say change the visual, visual animations first 
to give people more of a warning and see what happens with that. After those changes, there are really only smaller changes that I don't have to explain in too much detail, and I will list them off for you now. Greatly reduce the tracking on all sticky grenades, and maybe even buff their blast radius when on the ground to compensate a little bit for the loss of appeal in PvP. Nerf the Deadeye perk on Golden Gun, as it has become too clearly the dominant choice in all activities. Concurrent small buffs to Convulsion and Gunfighter, or at least giving us an actual tangible number for how much Gunfighter helps on Golden Gun wouldn't be a bad idea either. Skip Grenades should get a straight damage nerf so they don't hit it uh, for as much total damage as a mid-impact sniper. And a small tweak to Shinobu's Vow wouldn't hurt it either, but it isn't at the top of my list right now, and that is an exotic change and not a subclass one. We can also hope that Bungie is working on somehow improving the hit registration of Arcblade, and now especially the Raider's Edge perk, which seems to decide not to do damage as much as hand cannons and shotguns do, and as much as Backstab decides to one-hit kill from the front. Oh, and also try to fix Backstab or just remove it completely, by the way. Who cares if Shadow Shot suppresses on contact? It should kill anything on, t on contact, bar extreme circumstances. This super takes more skill than Golden Gun in every way, so that when some fool chooses Quiver, that, sh that person should at least be able to attempt to get a triple armored super montage kill clip, or at least be given a decent option against Titan Bubble, albeit in an insane one. Lastly, in my opinion, Energy Drain on Voidwalker could use some small nerfs. Even as a Voidwalker main, I can see that allowing al it allowing you to essentially act like a Sunsinger in their super is a little bit too much. With any luck, changes like Sunsinger buffs that we th may think are needed may not be. Reducing subclass power and ability spam to around the current Sunsinger levels is, in my opinion, exactly what this game needs, and all of these changes focus on widening the skill gap, hopefully, which for me and many that I know would make the game more fun. And I am willing to admit that I may not be able to foresee all the shifts in the ability meta, so to speak, and that it will almost certainly need further tweaks after these would be tested. Now I turn it over to you. Did I miss something? Do you have certain things you disagree with, or do you have a completely opposing opinion to mine? Please use the comment section below in a mature manner and explain to me your own point of view. Um, I know Juggernaut especially is a hot topic, and I don't think that the changes that I mentioned uh, early in the video, those may not be enough to nerf it completely, I mean, because people can still run on the ground and um, be very effective with Juggernaut, so there might be a, a few more changes that Juggernaut needs. Um, uh, for example, uh, it should not be able to tank a golden gun shot. If you get hit in the shield with a golden gun, it should just go straight through your shield and, and destroy you. Same with like a sleeper simulant, honestly. Like just things like that are kind of ridiculous. But anyways, um, thank you all for watching and I will start work on the far more complicated weapons changes video as soon as possible. Hopefully some new folks stick around and I hope to see you then. Have a great rest of your day.